Alright, we're gonna give that a 12 ounce mocha. Small 12 ounce mocha? Yeah. A modest drink? You can mock me for it. <laughs> hey, it's I, mock I don't judge. Yeah. I don't judge. If you watch a lot of cable news, you might recognize this guy. I see you almost every morning. <laughs> I'm sorry. Nico. California Congressman Eric Swalwell is best known for his constant TV appearances attacking President Trump for his supposed ties to Russia. We have a really bad kid at the White House. Now, Swalwell's trying to use that notoriety in a bid for president. But in a field of 21 Democrats, being a cable news darling isn't enough. So he's in Iowa, trying to get his name out there to everyone else. How long did it take you to get to that point where you were comfortable in sticking out your hand and making that introduction? It's very, I would say, intimidating to say you're running for president. I mean, sure. it's like, I'm running I'm running for president. Like, like every chance I get, I've got to introduce myself. Like, I'm not starting, you know, as Vice President Biden here. Right now, Swalwell is barely registering in the polls, getting just 1%. And as much as he likes talking about the Mueller report, Iowa voters don't. So as he traverses the state, Swalwell is pivoting to one high-profile progressive issue. We must end gun violence in America. Hard stop. He talks about guns everywhere he goes. Hello. At small house parties, he laments inaction from Congress. I came to Congress right after Sandy Hook had happened. I had hoped that I could be a part of a Congress that would actually do something about what had happened. Nothing. In meet and greets, he defends his proposal to implement universal background checks and to ban and buy back assault weapons. What happens if people don't participate? If you're caught with it, like, there's a penalty, but there's no roundup. In meetings with small town journalists, he talks about the political risks of being the gun control candidate. No other candidate's really talking about it as much as you, I don't think. You know, we're, we're promising to make it a top priority. Are you sure that's not going to be lethal? I mean... But a lot of Iowans, like a lot of Democratic voters, care mostly about one thing, beating Trump at all costs. I've been a Democrat a long time, but I've seen a lot of wimps <laughs> in the Democratic Party. You know, and I'm being brutally yeah. honest, but I think this country is at a crossroads. I was born a Democrat, born a, a, in a, a democracy. I don't want to die in a, a dictatorship. Well said. I'm counting on all of us to make sure it's still true. Swalwell gets the urgency. So when he's not talking about guns, he's assuring voters that his coastal progressive views don't blind him to the needs of Trump voters. My parents, they're both Republicans. I was reaching across the dinner table before I ever had to reach across the aisle to work with a Republican. I passed legislation in the minority in the Congress with Republicans. I go on Fox News, one, so my parents can see me on TV. It's the only way they see me. But two, I am not going to miss an opportunity to communicate with somebody who just wants higher wages, lower health care costs, and a brighter future for their kids. What's your path to the nomination right now? How do you win? My vision is go big, be bold, do good. I'm a candidate born in Iowa, educated in the South, married to a Hoosier from Southern Indiana, and represents a diverse district in California. I can go across the country and credibly say that I see you, I hear you, I'm for you. Why should another white guy be president? Well, a white guy who doesn't see other identities or understand other experiences should not be president. I do. Uh, and, you know, where there would be gaps in my knowledge or my experience, I will pass the mic to people, uh, you know, who do have that experience. I've, I've also pledged that I would ask a woman to serve uh, as vice president. Would you settle to be someone's vice president? Well, I'm running to be president. I see a pathway to being president, and I'll serve our country any way that it's needed, including, of course, uh, being vice president. It's an unusual admission for someone running for president, but that's often the outcome of long shot campaigns like Swatwell's. A higher profile, which may lead to a higher office. The question is, how long can a candidate like Swalwell keep up this life of running in random gyms and parenting by phone while their spouse takes care of the kids? Look at you! There will be days where I'll be on the road and she'll call me and she'll be like, are you effing kidding me? Like, you're gone for, you know, six days, seven days. Like, how are we going to do this? And 
I mean, it's, it's hard. It's not, it's not easy. For now, he's still out here, cramming in four or five events a day. Hey, 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 Eric Swalwell. Attending as many meet and greets as he can and hoping he makes it to caucus day. I put this down uh, over here. How do you win when it's a house party that's 20 people here? Yeah. You just got to keep coming back and you just got to trust that you're running for the right reason and that you're going to connect and that you're showing up will be respected and then you come back again.